Hi guys. So, full disclosure here, this is not the video I intended to release this week. The one I was working on, I decided to put off for a little bit. It was actually about American Girl, but now American Girl is in the news cycle because conservatives are mad at it again. The poll place, it was like wokeified. It was, how long has this been going on with American Girl? I'm not getting into it. I just, I didn't want to end up a part of that. So. Apologies in advance if this one is more, I don't know, disorganized, more rambly than usual. But I also think it'll be okay because today's video is kind of a rant video, and that's, that's always fun. So, on March 26, 2021, I uploaded my very first video ever. Your brat stalls aren't rare, a look into the secondhand doll market. It's a very uh, crunchy attempt at a first video, but I do look back on it fondly. It did unquestionably well for a very first video, and I think everything I talked about was pretty important. If you haven't seen it yet, don't worry too much about it. I don't really consider it required watching for this video, because I'm probably going to repeat a lot of what I said in that video. Because, honestly, in the nearly two years since I uploaded that video, nothing's really changed. Arguably, things have gotten worse, but I did want to revisit that topic, the secondhand doll market, and the way prices have gotten so incredibly bad, just, I guess, as a more experienced YouTuber, but also to talk about how things have advanced and why they've gotten this way. So this is kind of an unofficial part two, but also not really. It's also a little bit of an advice video for newer or less experienced collectors. We'll see what it turns into. So, it is easier to frame this by talking about Bratz, because Bratz prices on the secondhand market are probably the worst of any other doll brand, well, Playline brand. I have not bought a Bratz doll off of eBay in like, a god, a year, maybe more. I've bought some of the repros, that's it. I do not even search Bratz on eBay or Mercari or anywhere else. Unless I just want to feel poor and depressed. When I made that video, I honestly thought that by now the prices on the secondhand market would have gotten more manageable. Because it's normal for prices to fluctuate. The secondhand doll market is so dependent on trends, on what people are looking for at any given time. That's honestly why, like, sometimes I avoid talking about certain dolls, especially if they're discontinued. Because as a, a quote-unquote influencer, I have the power to just absolutely crash certain markets if I want to. And that's true for a lot of other YouTubers in my position. I've seen it happen so many times. There's a doll brand that's not like exceedingly common, but it's not very well known, so it goes for pretty good prices secondhand, right? Because there's not a huge demand. But a YouTuber with a large audience talks about it in a video, and like, literally in real time, you can watch the price of the dolls skyrocket. But for the most part, big brands like Bratz and Monster High that have hundreds upon hundreds of dolls circulating at any given time, they go through waves. The prices will go up and down depending. Monster High from like 2016 to 2020 was like dirt cheap. They were so easy to buy because there was a lot of bad blood with the reboot. So collectors were just selling off their entire collections, high supply, low demand, economics or something. But then Monster High became kind of a TikTok trend. The new reboot has brought it back into the public consciousness and now prices are going up and up, and they'll probably keep rising. And it's the same thing with Bratz. Nostalgia, TikTok trend, brand revival, high secondhand prices. And there's no way to phrase this without sounding kind of mean, but this is due almost entirely to new, inexperienced collectors coming into the hobby. And I don't want to discourage anyone from starting a doll collection. Do not interpret this as gatekeeping. But it is a factual statement. The secondhand market is 
as bad as it is right now because it's being controlled by people who have no idea how to manage it. So hopefully, if that applies to you, then you can come off this video with some new knowledge and skills to apply when buying dolls. That's what I'm hoping for. And again, just to be clear, this applies very specifically to the fashion doll secondhand market. I know a lot of other collecting communities are experiencing something similar and due to similar reasons, but I can really only speak to what I know and what I see. So you may ask why I think it's these new inexperienced collectors causing this, and I'll explain. So I'm active in a lot of collector spaces, you know, doll Twitter, doll Instagram, even though I literally never post on Instagram. I'm so sorry to anyone who follows me there. Sometimes I lurk on doll Tumblr, but I want to focus on two social media spaces specifically, TikTok and Facebook, because those are where I see the most people who are, again, I'm so sorry if this sounds mean, but they're very obviously not experienced collectors, which is fine. Everyone starts somewhere, but the thing is, they're inexperienced collectors acting like they're the authority on the doll community. So they're trying to give advice and information to other inexperienced collectors that's verifiably pretty bad, and it just creates a, a vicious cycle. And the most surefire way to identify someone who is an inexperienced collector is if they talk about the rarity of a doll. If they're overly concerned with how rare a doll is and what her value is. They think that the more expensive a doll is on eBay, the more rare she is. And that's all they talk about. When they show off their collection, they make sure to tell you how much each one costs. I can also tell the Bratz community specifically is full of newcomers because in the Facebook groups, every other post is someone complaining about being scammed. I mean, it's a daily occurrence. And I'm not going to repost anyone because they're private groups and it's, it's kind of a dick move anyways. But you have this large group of people who, one, don't know proper buying-selling etiquette and haven't developed the tools to identify scams. Two, don't know how to properly identify the value of a doll. And three, think that rare and expensive are synonyms. And these are the people running the secondhand doll market. That's why it's in shambles. I'm sorry, but it is. A lifetime collectors, me, my friends, we're being priced out of doll collecting because you have these people who are new to the hobby, just throwing more and more money into the market to get these quote unquote rare dolls. And for what? They don't seem to buy the dolls because they like how they look or they're attached to the characters. It's for the meager amount of clout you get in the community for owning a sought-after doll. And like, it doesn't even matter. It's all fake. It's made up. They think they're buying these rare dolls and that justifies the price, but they're not even rare. Do you want to know how completely fake and unserious the Bratz market is? Let's take a look at one specific doll, Shrek Yasmin. So for the longest time, this doll was not sought after. No one wanted this doll. Or if you did, you could easily buy her in box, under retail, anywhere from like 15 to $20. But specifically around TikTok, she became somewhat of a meme. Maybe around a year ago, people started buying her ironically. Suddenly everyone wanted a Shrek Yasmin. And guess what? Now she's over... $200 on eBay right now. And of course, they make sure to label her rare, as if that means anything, as if there's not literally 10 other listings of her on the site at any given moment. People are spending hundreds on a Shrek Bratz. Because why? Uh, peer pressure? FOMO? Do they just really want to try out that expired Shrek lip gloss? Like, sure, some people in the doll community will be like, oh, you have a Shrek Yasmin, that's cool. But I want you to take your Shrek brats up to just any random person and tell them you spent $250 on her. They're probably 
not going to think you're the coolest person on earth. Which, yeah, random people would probably be horrified to know how much I spend on some things in my collection. But the difference is that I'm not collecting dolls for the approval of random people. The ones who are spending hundreds of dollars on a Shrek Bratz, they probably are. And like, uh, some dolls are rare. Some dolls are worth two or three hundred dollars because they're legitimately hard to find and also in demand. But these dolls are from international markets, dolls that weren't distributed very widely. Not, you know, brats, of which there are literally thousands upon thousands. Let's also look at Felicia. Even if you're a newcomer, you're probably pretty familiar with Felicia. In the original run of Bratz, she got only two dolls, one in Campfire, one in Sweet Dreams. She's pretty notable for having, among all the Bratz dolls released, the darkest skin tone. So even in her time, she was a pretty popular character and she became a pretty big fan favorite over time. However, a lot of people, for whatever reason, consider Felicia to be a very rare character. And for that reason, she's extremely extremely expensive on the second-hand market. But I can go on eBay right now and find... Yeah, four listings for Campfire Felicia right now, all in relatively good condition. That's not rare. It's not. And there's another level here of people, let's be honest, primarily white collectors who consider Felicia to be a novelty purely because of her skin color. So then you have black collectors, one who feel represented by Felicia and may want to buy her because they feel connected to her as a character, unable to, because all these new collectors have convinced themselves she's so rare and so valuable. And now that it's rumored Bratz is going to be reproducing Felicia for an upcoming release, as well as the fact they've included her in recent collector's releases like the Holiday doll and the Moa Lola designer doll, suddenly, <laughs> Everyone's trying to get rid of their Felicia. The Facebook groups are flooded with posts of people selling her, and yeah, a lot are obvious scams. But even people lamenting the fact that suddenly their Felicia won't be so rare anymore. I wish I could provide examples because it's so on the nose it almost sounds fake, but yeah, unfortunately that is slightly unethical. And like, a doll collecting is already a pretty consumeristic hobby. I won't deny that, but it's still sad to see your hobby constantly reduced down to money and numbers in a game of who has the rarest doll? Who has the most expensive doll? Because it's not fun. That's not why I collect. Most doll collectors who have been around for a while, that's not why they collect. And I'm saying this as nice as I possibly can, but if you come into the doll collecting community and you find yourself only wanting these rare sought out dolls that everyone else wants, that your likes and dislikes are based entirely on what seems to be trendy, that a doll's rarity, it seems to be the only factor in deciding if you want her, I'm gonna be blunt, maybe this hobby isn't for you. And I'm saying that for your own good, because you're going to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on these rare dolls, their value is going to depreciate, you're going to realize you never really wanted them in the first place, and then what? Doll collecting is a hobby that requires patience. When you see these people who have these huge collections, it's probably because they've been collecting for several years and they've been slowly building it up. I know what it's like to have these dolls that you really, really want, but you have to keep in mind that they're probably not going anywhere. People are always buying and reselling dolls, and if you're patient and persistent, you're going to find her at a reasonable price eventually. When you pay hundreds of dollars for a doll that you just have to have at that moment, you're telling sellers that it's worth it to list these dolls at these extreme prices because people will buy them and those prices just keep going up and up and up until they're completely inaccessible. Do you see this doll? She's a Zodiac Girls Virgo, specifically from the second release when some of them got new outfits. 
This doll is actually legitimately extremely rare. You could look on eBay right now and you're probably not going to find her. I have wanted this doll literally since I was like 16 years old. That's almost a decade of searching for her, of checking eBay every time I thought about it, having alerts turned on. And you know how much I paid for her once I found her? $25. This is a Struts doll. There are these funny little horse dolls that didn't sell very well and thus very rarely appear on eBay. I mean, I almost never ever see them. I probably wouldn't even know about them if not for a good friend of mine. By definition, this is very, very rare. I found two of her, new in box, like $10 each at an antique mall, just by chance. This is a Moxie Teen stall. They're not extremely rare, but like a lot of Bratz stalls, they're just really sought after, and they get really expensive on the secondhand market. I found three of them, almost complete, in excellent condition, all listed together in a lot that I won for a bid of like, $30, $40, because they were mislabeled as teen trends rather than moxie teens. And you could say, oh, you're just lucky, but I'm not. I'm persistent. I've been collecting dolls basically my entire life, so I know how to shop. I'm not gonna just throw as much money as possible at eBay or shady Facebook sellers to get everything I want as soon as possible, because that's just not sustainable and frankly, it takes a lot of the joy and fun out of collecting. And a lot of the, the know-how, it really does just come with experience, with having patience, with accepting the fact that your grails, the dolls that you really, really want, it may take a long time before you have them. And sometimes it is best to wait on getting your grails, because with enough time, you'll learn if it was because you actually did want her, or if you just wanted her because it felt like everyone else did. There are dolls from like the 70s and 80s that are still in circulation on the secondhand doll market in good condition. The Bratz, they're not going anywhere. There's no shortage of them. If you see your grail listed at a price you feel like you can't afford, that you just feel isn't worth it, just wait. Wait until someone else lists her for cheaper or just wait for the market to deflate and the prices overall to get better. I wish I could say when that will be, but hopefully soon. So that's my advice for all the new collectors out there. I repeat myself as if I haven't said this like a hundred times already. Be patient, but also don't concern yourself too much with the rarity or the market value of a doll, because nine times out of a 10, those numbers are completely meaningless in the grand scheme of things. Build a list of dolls that you like because you like how they look. You like the characters. You have a connection to them. Don't even factor monetary value into it. If you're committed to this hobby, you know, treat it like you're going to have these dolls forever. A permanent one-time purchase. Don't treat them like an investment. And if you see someone spending thousands of dollars on a Bratz doll or selling one for thousands of dollars, Shame them. Publicly. Drag them into the stocks and throw rotten fruit at them. Drag them through the town square with a nun ringing a bell and yelling, Shame. Shame. For legal reasons, that was a joke. But really, I think it's time we just stop indulging this. It's only going to get worse and make it that much more difficult for people in this hobby. And there are collectors who... Every now and then we'll sell off their collections just to clear space and so they can add new things. And that's perfectly valid. But again, I think that is something usually attempted by more experienced collectors who are doing it for reasons other than just treating these little plastic women like they're the stock market. At the end of the day, I can't tell you what to do with your money. I understand that. But I would like to one day look at Brat stalls on eBay now, I would like to buy a Brat Stalls off of eBay without feeling like I'm ruining my chances of making a down payment on a home one day. I can only imagine how this sounds to anyone not in the community. Just me here yelling, I want to buy Brat Stalls. Joe Biden, what is your plan for reducing the rapid inflation of Brat Stalls on the secondhand market? You've been suspiciously silent on this issue. Okay, obviously, I need to go. I think I've more or less said my piece. 
if you've lasted through this entire rant, thank you. Seriously, I'm still like, coming to terms with the fact that people, like, care at all what I have to say. Much less care about what I have to say about dolls. But, absolutely let me know your thoughts down below. You know, this is obviously an ongoing issue. I'm curious what your experiences are with the secondhand brats market, what you think of the rising prices, etc. And when you're done with that, just be sure to like and subscribe for any future fashion doll content. Thank you. Mm -hmm.